Okay, Tap TV viewers, we are at the Fantasy of Flight Museum near Orlando, Florida, and we're going to be speaking with the legendary Hermit Weeks today. <laughs> hey, how do you do? You. Thanks for coming out. So, is it okay if we check some of your airplanes out today? Hey, absolutely. All Come right, on, let's, let's go. go. Okay, so this is my first airplane I ever built when I was eight years old. Is that pretty cool? It was uh, beyond my ability to design the uh, the landing gear to work. It's just setting on the wheels here, but I got in, uh, innovative. I set it on top of my toy wagon, and I would go down the street dreaming about flight with the wind blowing in my face. I went on to uh, build some uh, little hang gliders in 10th grade when I jumped off the roof of my house. Uh, built another little airplane that I was going to tow behind a mini bike, but I never got it finished. Probably it was a good thing. But when I was in high school, I bought a set of plans. I built most of my first flyable airplane. And this is a picture of me welding up the fuselage, doing some riveting. And uh, that picture was 17 years old. I uh, finished most of the airplane my last year of high school. Unfortunately, I went away to college for a couple of years. I didn't get to work on it, but I finally finished it. Test flew it myself when I was 21, and that's it right there. So you, so you said watching the Red Baron, Snoopy and the Red Baron got you in Well, you know, it's interesting because it's like, I think everybody can look back on their life and see a little thing where they, they kind of hit a crossroads in their life and they went off on a path. I heard that song, Snoopy and the Red Baron, when I was 13 years old, and it was like a predestined cue right. that set me on this path of fascination with flight. And of course, it's obvious, you know, why I picked that airplane. And uh, so it was really World War I airplanes that got me into aviation, and I got a couple of really cool ones. Let's go check okay. them out. Yeah. Uh, uh, 33 hours and to get to Oshkosh over 11 days. Tell me, tell me you had a couple of co-pilots, right? Uh, actually, that airplane takes four people to fly. We had six on it. Um, it uh, you have to, the pilot and the co-pilot are required, but this airplane also requires a flight engineer. So you have to have three people in the cockpit, but to operate it, you have to have a bowsman. Somebody's got to release the, you know, the, the buoy. Somebody's got to be able to pick it up. Somebody's got to, this airplane has no brakes. So there's two big uh, water parachutes that are like three foot pieces of canvas that the bowsman throws out when the pilot tells them to, and they kind of slow the airplane down. Otherwise, the airplane goes too fast and will overrun the buoy. And that little position's up here in the front. Pretty big, huh? It's, yeah, yeah. You know, it reminds me a little bit of a, of a, now what is it? A short Sunderland. Okay, it reminds me just a little bit of a B-29, just the size. Ah, uh, the eh, B-29 is bigger. Yeah, no, this this is higher, but the B-29 okay. has a bigger wingspan. Okay. It's funny you should say that because this hangar was designed for this airplane, and I also have a B-29. Okay. And so that little cutout in the top there oh. is for the tail of this airplane and the B-29 to come through, and the high of the hangar doors is to get these propellers in okay. and the wingspan of the hangar doors is to get the B-29 in. Okay, so it's so all measured by the B-29. It's all measured by the B-29 in this. Now, this airplane, the pilot, it's actually a two-story. The pilot and the crew are up on the upper deck and the bowsman actually sits up here in the nose. Okay. And somebody's got to be able to, there's a little hatch that opens up. Uh, he's got to reach out, you know, unhook the buoy. He's got to be able to uh, throw the drogues out. There's a couple of big water parachutes when we land. We have to re-moor re and uh, the airplane goes too fast without putting those out. So anyway. Very cool. It is very cool. Very cool plane. I've never seen one of those. I don't know if I ever will again. <laughs> <laughs> I fly this. I was flying this the other day, Curtis Pusher. So this is uh, kind of a pioneer pre-war airplane. And uh, this is a little bit of a trainer for me to kind of fly this period stuff to get ready for this Benoit that we're doing, right. which is for the uh, uh, the reenactment of the 100th anniversary of the first commercial flight. Oh my gosh, that's just amazing. So here's, uh, these are just all magazine covers with uh, one, some one of our airplanes on it. It's pretty cool. So, you know, it's the little racers and, uh, you know, the Mustangs, and uh, this is my second aerobatic airplane that I designed and built. Won uh, 12 medals in that one, uh, eight in the other one. There's a picture of the flying boat up there. 
Awesome. Yeah, so we've got this all set up for World War One. Oh, I got to show you something. Come on into the women's restroom here. We're, gonna, we're trying we're to we're trying to get people to you know, reflect on their own rally. So here we got a picture of the women. Oh, we got something upside down there. Come here, come in here. Now, what do women like to do when they get in the restroom? <gasps> Bring the camera. Come here. Check this out. Very cool. Is that cool? Yeah. Check this out. Oh, we got a Mustang, we got a Warhawk, we got a Spitfire. Oh, check out in one of our oh, cockpits. Oh, come on. Now, is that cool or what? You guys are going <laughs> to probably hiding in here later. <laughs> Very cool. I love it. That's a great idea. Was that your idea? Oh, no, this is all my idea. That's normally not part of the tour, but. <laughs> But in the long run, uh, well, we can talk about that later. We just actually set up this hangar. We did a World War I symposium uh, last Saturday. Normally, a lot of the airplanes that are sitting out are actually in here. So, But I want to show you a couple of really cool airplanes I got from a friend of mine in New Zealand. You heard of Peter Jackson, the film director? Okay. The Hobbit, yeah. Lord of yeah. the Rings, yeah. King gotcha. Kong. Check this out. So these are two airplanes that my friend Peter Jackson in New Zealand built for me for a trade. This is a Sopwith Snipe, and this is the airplane that basically uh, came after the Sopwith Camel, which is the famous uh, kind of airplane Snoopy flew. This airplane is a German Albatross. Oh, check out this fabric. Yeah, I know. I'm it's not, it's not, it's not, it's that. not even, uh, this is not painted. This is the original way they did the fabric on this pattern in World War One, and it was actually printed onto the fabric. So all they did was they covered it and they put clear dope on. Is that supposed to be like some kind of camouflage? Was yes, it yes, okay. it was. And actually, the pattern on the lower wing is different than the upper I wing. I see that. Yeah, yeah, so it was just kind of a, but it was something the Germans came up with. And actually, it looks kind of funky right now, but if you see this like in the fall colors, I mean, it, it looks like fall colors. The fuselage is all made out of wood. Uh, it's got the original engine. Uh, here's the airspeed indicator actually out here. A little anemometer. And the pilot, if you want to know what the airspeed is, you have to actually look outside the airplane. That's cool. Also, the little, uh, the radiator is up in the wing here. Radiator's up in the wing, and if the pilot wants to control the radiator temperature, he actually puts his hands outside the cockpit. And uh, the gauge is right there, sticking up out of the water pipe. <laughs> anyway, these airplanes are absolutely beautiful. I should be wanting to fly on one of these. It's, there way, you. it's way more simple. Well, actually, actually, these are a little <laughs> difficult to fly, but oh, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure. But these things are—they're not just airplanes to me. These are like pieces of art, and I think what we do here—you know—this has no commercial value anymore. But you know, this was the, the leading edge of technology back in those days. So what we do is we kind of relive the past. We kind of rebuild—you know—the passion of the past, which is what our little thing on the back right. is. Okay. And uh, basically. Um, you you know, like I said, I think this is an art form now. I'm, you know, yeah, and it's I like agree. sailing. People, sailing used to rule the world 150 years ago. Right. There's no commercial value to it anymore. Why do people still sail? Why do we do this? It's for the intrinsic value of, of, right. of reliving that and, and doing, building something with your hands, and basically reliving cutting edge technology in the past. You know, right. so I love the World War One airplanes, the World War Two, everything in between. And so anyway, so I'm very fortunate to have this big facility to uh, share it with everybody. I'm, and I'm glad that you do. And now tell me how many planes in the facility are flight worthy. Are any of them flight worthy? Uh, yeah, I don't okay. collect anything I don't intend to fly. But uh, obviously I can only fly so many and it takes a lot to keep them running. So we rotate airplanes in the collection. Okay. Something may uh, uh, something may uh, fly for a couple of years, like the big flying boat as an example. We flew it across the Atlantic. We flew air shows. We, we flew it for about three or four years. And then it was like time to move on to something else. A new kid on the block showed up. And right. so we pickled it. We could get it flying again if we wanted to. But right now we're focused on other airplanes. So uh, I think the most we ever had flying at any one time, we had our 15 year anniversary a couple of years ago. Okay. And over three days, I 
flew 15 different airplanes, five different Very airplanes cool. per day. So Very cool. that was neat. And any more than that, it's just, you know, it's just, I can't fly them. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been speaking with Kermit Weeks and he is a legendary um, airplane builder Nut. or air, <laughs> aircraft builder and collector. And uh, and thank you very much for yeah, your yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. My pleasure. Good Come deal. Come visit uh, Fantasy of Flight Museum near Orlando, Florida. Come check us out.